and welcome to today's video. What we're going to be focusing on today is the IPA and sim symbology, basically. The phonetic symbols that you see next to these words in the dictionary, they kind of look like alien symbols a little bit. And we're going to be focusing on what those are, if they're important or not to learn, the different categories of them. And all the different variations, or at least, no, not all of them, actually, just some variations of all these uh, different symbols. And that's basically what we're going to be focusing on today is the American English IPA guide. Right. So let's start off with what is IPA? Right? Now, IPA stands for the International Phonetic Alphabet. Right, there's an entire alphabet focused on the phonology, on the symbols that represent sounds. It's the universal system to represent spoken language sounds. Right? I'm going to give you some examples. Not many, because there are a lot, but I'll give you some examples. So we have vowels. We have, remember, focus on the symbols, not on the word E-C, but on the actual symbol, which represents C. We have I as in sit. We have U as in book. U as in boot. A as in cat. P as in pat. T as in tap. K as in cat. Th as in think. Sh, as in shin. Right, so we have vowels, we have consonants, we also have diphthongs. All right, in another video, I talked about diphthongs a little bit, how there are two sounds that one letter can represent two sounds. All right, so in this case, we have two diphthongs. There are more diphthongs, but here we have just two, which are A, and sorry, <laughs> I, I'm thinking A here, I, like like, so A, E, these are two sounds, A, E. A is actually also a diphthong, but it's not here. So A is E and E, E, E. And here we have I, A, E, A, E, I. We also have the O, O, U, O, U, O, O, like go. Each IPA symbol denotes a unique sound, offering a precise method for learning pronunciation across languages. So that's basically what IPA is, or the, the alphabet, the phonetical alphabet. It's basically just to give you a little bit more of a precise idea how each word is pronounced, represented by a symbol. That's all it really is. How many IPA symbols are there? There are a lot, all right? and it changes constantly. So as of now, of course, there are approximately over 160 symbols. Right? It's a very long alphabet. You know, this includes consonants, vowels, tones, and diacritics. Among others, there are other categories of the IPA symbol as well. These are just some. And we actually classify them in different categories. Right. What are these categories? There are, there are many different categories, but I'm just going to give you a few. We have the pulmonic consonants. These are categorized by manner of articulation, example, nasal, stop, fricative, and place of articulation, like bilabial, dental, velar. These are some examples of these would be the voiceless bilabial stop, or just the p, the voiceless alveolar stop, the t. We have voiceless alveolar fricative, bilabial nasal, alveolar lateral approximant. Again, just some. There are many, many more. We also have non-pulmonic consonants, sounds produced without the use of the lungs, including clicks, implosives, and ejectives, such as the exclamation mark, so emphasizing something. Or not the exclamation mark itself, but emphasizing something. That would be the post-alveolar click. We have the voice bilabial implosive. We have the velar ejective. All this terminology, all these different um, names for the phonetic symbol, 
Is it important? We're going to talk about that in a second. We also have vowels categorized by height and backness of the tongue and lip rounding. So we have the E sound. We have the U, which is close back rounded vowel. We have the A ah, open front unrounded vowel. We get into super segmentals, symbols representing intonation, tone, stress, and length. We have the primary stress, that little tiny apostrophe looking thing that changes the stress of a word or even a letter. <clears throat> we have the length mark when you stretch out the vowel a little bit. We have the secondary stress as well, which is, it looks basically like a comma. <clears throat> we have diacritics, marks added to other symbols to alter their sounds, such as <clears throat> nasalized. So where it sounds like mm or mm or the ing sound, the mm, these are nasalized and they're represented by this little squiggly line there. We have aspirated, we have palatalized. So when you use the palate of your tongue, your tongue touches the roof of your mouth, basically. And there are many more. There are many, many, many more. All right. But if you are interested in all the different symbols that exist, always go to the International Phonetic Association. <clears throat> that's a website and if you want the full IPA symbol list and their updates because they constantly change it periodically now when I say constantly it's not like every day but periodically they they update it they add some new sounds they might replace some new sounds and it depends on what type of English we're talking about is it American English British English Australian English in this case I focus of course is on American English now, now at this point this is the question you might be asking yourself do I need to learn IPA I mean look at this it's a lot it's a lot to memorize and the all the different sounds and with each symbol and even the names of each symbol and how we categorize it and what we do with our articulators to make these sounds. It is a lot. It's a lot. And do you need to learn it? The short answer is no. <laughs> no, no, you don't. Now, some teachers and some linguists or accent coaches, maybe they might say that, yes, it's important that you learn this list and you learn how what each symbol represents it's gonna it'll help you but minimally like it's honestly I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you you don't need to learn all this if you kind of get an idea what four five six seven of the most common basic symbols represent the sound that rep they represent particularly the vowel symbols just get some of those vowel symbols memorized and you're good to go and you don't even really have to memorize that honestly all right so is it important do you have to learn it do you have to memorize it no now why not there are several reasons why you don't need to memorize this and some of them some of the reasons is one esl focuses on communication not phonetic symbols all right so i'm not i want you to speak clearly i want you to speak fluently and I want you to be confident when speaking clear English. I don't want you to become linguists, linguists or accent reduction coaches or in English teachers. That's not the aim here. The aim is just for you to communicate effectively. So therefore you don't really need to learn all these symbols. Now the IPA's complexity can overshadow practical language skills. Spending too much time, energy, and effort on memorizing all these different symbols and how they're pronounced and their names is taking away time from more important topics like vocabulary expansion, grammar structures, uh, complex word orders, uh, collocations, etc. You know, syntax, sentence structure, etc. Listening comprehension skills. It's so much more important to focus on all these other things. And I'm sure you are just like me where you don't have all the time in the world. You know, you have very limited time. So don't, don't waste your time unnecessarily focusing on the IPA, 
alphabet, despite what maybe some teachers, language coaches, or accent reduction coaches may say, because it's important in the linguistic field, it's kind of important, but pragmatically speaking, it's not that important for you to learn that. Now, alternative pronunciation tools and methods are effective, so you can, instead of learning the alphabet, the phonetic alphabet, you can download apps that can help you with pronunciation. You can shadow read, mimic, which is probably the best thing you can do. Just watch a movie or a video a series, a YouTube video, a podcast, and play it after every sentence. Pause and just repeat. Mimic what they say in the exact same way they say it with the correct intonation, the inflections, the stress, and the speed. Just mimic to the best of your ability. And that's a whole lot better than memorizing over 160 different uh, phonetic symbols. And lastly, natural immersive experience often teach pronunciation better. What do I mean by that? Well, if you have the opportunity to go to the US and you interact with Americans a little bit more often, you can hear, engage in conversation, hear the sounds, and that immersive experience is gonna be super beneficial for you. If you do not have the opportunity to come to the US, um, it's no problem. You can find an online tutor or English teacher. You can engage in uh, pronunciation lessons or just conversation and listen to their sounds. And that's a little bit more immersive than just mechanically memorizing all these different uh, phonetic symbols. So in summary, Understand IPA. I introduced the International Phonetical Alphabet as a universal system to represent the sounds of any language accurately. I explained some of the IPA symbols, not all of them. So I showcased examples of IPA symbols for American English covering vowels, consonants, and diphthongs. Why IPA isn't essential for ESL. So I explained that while the IPA provides precise pronunciation guidance, focusing on practical communication and immersive learning is more beneficial for ESL students, for yourself. All right, so don't, don't waste your time too much on learning all these different symbols. And finding IPA symbols. In case you are interested in phonology and all these different symbols and what they're, they're called and how you pronounce them, like I said, I, you can consult the official IPA chart on the International Phonetic Association's website. Right? And they're going to give you a really big list of symbols, and it's updated. And just check them out if you're, you're interested. All right. Now, we're going to finish up this video. But if you liked it, if you found it informative, helpful in any way, please give it a thumbs up, like it subscribe share it with somebody who might find it beneficial as well follow us on facebook on instagram and on tiktok as well and to finish up i'm gonna give you a quote i love quotes so today's quote is if you don't know how to pronounce a word say it loud and proud um william strunk said that i he's an american professor or he was he he's deceased he was an American professor, I believe in the 40s, in the 50s, I think, at Cornell University. And he's written some books on language. And it was meant to be a joke. You know, if you don't know how to pronounce a word, say it loud and proud. In other words, be confident and make mistakes, please. And I know all the students are English students. They try not to make mistakes. They don't want to make mistakes. That's why they're learning English. But it's actually the opposite. You have to make mistakes. The more mistakes you make, the better. The more mistakes you make, the more you will improve. The more mistakes you make, the faster you're going to be able to communicate effectively. So be confident. And even if you do make a mistake, so what? Learn from it. Correct it. Move on. Now I'm going to give you a really, really quick example of how many different symbols there are. You can always pause the video if you want to detail the list I'm going to give you in a second um, of all the different types of symbols. All right, so we have consonant symbols, some. These aren't even all of them. These are just some of them. We have vowels. We have diphthongs. 
We have other types of symbols that represent lengthening, or pausing, or exclamation. We have less common consonants. We have additional vowels, uh, suprasegmentals. We have diacritics for modifying sound, among many, many other uh, type of um, symbols, symbology out there with phonetics. All right, just to give you an idea how lengthy it is. All right, so I hope you guys found it useful. Uh, keep learning, keep practicing. Check out my future videos where we're going to get into a little bit more practice. Today was a little bit more theory. I just wanted to give you a general idea of why these symbols exist. Why do you see these symbols from here and there and how complex it can actually get? So main idea here is don't, don't overcomplicate your life focusing too much on these symbols. It's not that important. Right. So I'm going to let you guys go. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.